This is the advanced features part four of how to do processing using the SQL select statement and it's a part of the information technology grade 12 caps syllabus. Now let's remind ourselves of the database that we are using. We are using the CD database and in it there's a table called CD which looks like this. There's the artist, the CD name, the genre, the replacement value and the owner ID. So in this lesson, we're going to focus particularly on the aggregate functions. And these are functions that you can use to find summaries of the data. For example, you can find the maximum value or the average value or the sum of the values. So we're going to learn about these aggregate functions. And the first one we're going to use is the count function. And it is a special one out of all the functions that we learned today. This is the one that can be used on any type of field, whether it's string or, or, or like text, or if it's a number, like a real or like a currency or something like that. This count can be used on either of them. All the others that we do will only be able to use with numbers. So when you say select count star, it means select all the records and that as will be changing the value or the title of that field and we do do that from the CD table. So let's have a look at that in uh, Access Database. So we're going to go to Create, Query Design and we're going to just close that and we're going to go and straight to the SQL and we're going to say select count of star from CD. Now if we run that, it should give us all the the total number of records in this data in this table, but there's no there's not a very nice little title there for that field, and that is why if I go back to the SQL, it's a good idea to have that as and give it a nice title. So we're going to call it total. So if we run it now, it looks a little bit better. It says total. We could have said total records, anything like that. So you can see that is 250 records in total in that table. Now, because we've used a star, it doesn't mean we have to always use a star. You could count based on a particular field. So we could count based on genre. Now, if you remember from previous videos, the genre f um, field in this table has some blanks. So when I count how many records there are in the genre field, there should be less than 250 because there, obviously there's some blanks in that scenario. So let's run it. And there we can see there's 245. So there are obviously five blanks. Um, other things that you can do with the count is, let's say we're going to select artist, it doesn't really matter, we could have said select star, and you can actually add a condition, so you only count certain records based on the following condition. So we could say where the artist equals, and let's say we want to count how many CDs we have from the muse. And so we say CD or the artist equals muse, and this will be the total for the number of muse CDs we've got. So there we go, we've got three Mu CDs, obviously we like the band, so that's why we've got three of them. So there we go, you can see you've got a count and we've got a criteria, so it will only count those uh, records that meet the criteria. So there you can see our second query that we just did already. Another type of aggregate function that we can use is a max. Now the next uh, aggregate functions that we use are going to revolve around an integer or a currency or some sort of number because you can't find the max value of text. Um, you need to find the max value of numbers. And the only field that's really a nice number field in this CD uh, database with the CD table is the replacement value. So we're going to find the maximum replacement value and we're going to give it a title or, or give it a field name of HA and that's from the CD table. So let's go and tr apply that to an access database. So we're back here. I'm going to take away count and say max. Now if I say max of artists, let's say as highest, let's call the, the word highest. Um, I don't know, actually know if it'll work. It'll probably, oh, it does find the highest. It, it can actually work with the string functions as far as based on the ASCII value. So it does work in that case. Uh, but if we really want to use them for numbers, so we're going to replace that with replacement of value. And it'll find the maximum replacement value and call it highest. And there, 200 is the highest replacement value. Again, just like what we did with the count, we can add a criteria where artist, let me spell where correctly, there, where artist equals muse. If you add a criteria, it will find the maximum replacement value 
for only those three CDs that the artist is the muse or muse. So the highest muse CD is a 180 Rand replacement value. So that finds the highest. What about if you want to find the lowest? Well, if you guessed correctly, if there's a max function, there's probably a min function, which we're going to rename as the lowest. And that will find the lowest replacement value of all the mu CDs, which is 100 Rand. So you get a min and you get a max. So there's our max replacement value. And then we have our min replacement value. Um, the only problem is I wouldn't actually call my min high. That's probably just a typo. I would probably call it low or something like that. The other two functions that I want to show you are the sum and the average. Now the sum, as you can guess, adds up all the values in that particular or that particular range, that number range. So we've got sum, replacement value will add up all the numbers in the replacement value field. Um, again, I've called it high there. You can probably rename it to something else, sum of replacement value. And the last one is finding the average amount. Now you could say sum of replacement value divided by count of star. You could do a calculation, but why do it a very long way where you can do it an easy way using an average function. But the key thing to remember about the average function, it's not average, it's AVG. The key, the way I remember it is that all these functions besides count tend to have three letters. So AVG is the form of using average um, in an access database. So we're going to apply those two scenarios to our current database. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to change min to the word sum. Sum of the replacement value as I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it sum muse because we are still got we still got our criteria. So this is only going to sum the replacement values of the muse CDs. If I took that criteria out, it would find the sum of all the C, all the records in that data in that table. So let's run that and see what it looks like. And there we can see if we add all the muse CDs together, it would be a total of two or four hundred rand. And let's work out what the average then must be. Well, we know that there are three of them, and there are 400 in total. So it'll be somewhere in the range of 400 divided by 3. But we don't need to do that calculation because we have an average function, which is AVG. Sounds like the antivirus program. So the average of the replacement value for all the CDs where the artist equals Muse equals to 133.33. Let's just test it to see what it looks like if we had to do an average on, let's say, a text field like artists. See what that does. Let's see, there's a problem there. It cannot find the average based on fields that do not have numbers in it. So there's a type mismatch. So that's why you must try to keep to fields that have integers or real numbers in. Now, one thing you would have noticed with all of these aggregate functions is that it only returned one little result. So there is no need to put any other data with this. And you need to remember that because if you do, it's going to give an error. So the key thing to remember here is do not add other fields when using aggregate functions. So I can't say genre, comma, count, star, because what's the point? Because you find in the, the counting all the records... But then why would you want a place to put all the genres in? It just doesn't fit because there are lots of genres, but there's only one value that will be returned when you use an aggregate function. So please don't use other fields when using aggregate functions because it looks something like this. If I correct what my mistake from the previous one, let's say we find the average replacement value like we had earlier. We happy it and it should work. There we go. It works correctly. The moment I add another field, let's say genre. To it then it just doesn't make sense because why do i have one answer and then a whole bunch of genres that i want to display and it'll go oh it can't work this is not part of the aggregate function so that's why it just doesn't fit but there is an option for you if you want to include other fields with your aggregate function that's normally when you want to group the results in other words i want to count the records but i want to count them based on a particular or grouped on a particular field. So for example, if I did a grouping, um, then you want to apply an aggregate function to that group. So instead of having the count of all the records, we want to see the count of all the genre jazz and then a count of all the genre um, pop. Instead of doing individual 
queries for each of those we can do that in one go so the key thing to remember about grouping is that you must use the grouped by clause and you must put it after the from or where whichever one is the last one you're using but the order by if you're doing any sorting that comes after the group so order by always goes last so here's an example we're going to find or the replacement average replacement value based on genre and we're going to do that from CD where genres like rock so this is the only the only the ones where the genre has the word rock in it but you notice at the end there there's a grouped by genre which means we're going to have the replacement value based on each individual genre so let's have a, let's have a look at what that looks like so here we have select genre and the average replacement value as average from CD and this will not work that gives me an error but if I say group by genre in other words group all the average replacement values by genre and then I run it you'll notice it give me a list of all the genres and the average for each of them the, the, the reason why there's a nothing in that one is there's some genres that are blank so the average for the blank genres are is that and the average for the afro pop ones is 150 and so on and there we go we've got a nice little criteria over there and we can actually go and add more criteria we can add a where clause if we just wanted the particular the, just the particular rock one so we can say where genre is like star rock star look i'm a rock star <laughs> so that means it'll find the the average replacement values of by each individual genre but only the genres where there's a word rock in it somewhere so there we go there's only the ones with a rock in somewhere so just a reminder we're going to have the grouped by clause which comes after the where or from whichever which one is the last and that is normally when you've got a another criteria or another field that you're displaying with an aggregate function you will group by that particular field now what happens if we want to have a certain criteria based on the aggregate function in our grouping then in that case we're going to want to as i said apply a condition to the grouping but we are going to use a having clause after the grouped by and this is where we can put the condition for what we are using the aggregate country for now it doesn't make a lot of sense now but you'll see in the example here we are selecting genre and the average replacement value from cd where genre like star rock star but we only want those average replacement values which are greater than 100 so if you actually want a criteria based on the aggregate function based in a group then you can use the having clause to set your criteria you cannot put that in the where clause because it hasn't um, been generated it's got to generate the results first and the having clause applies itself last so let's see that in an example so there's our, our query if I run it you can see there's a whole lot of rocks that have average replacement values we only want to find those that are greater than 130 where the averages are greater than 130 so then we're going to use the having clause and we're going to say where the average replacement value hopefully I spelled that right is greater than 130 so we're using the aggregate aggregate function as a certain criteria and there we go we've only got those where the aggregate function is greater than 130 so we cannot have the having or the the criteria this average replace value greater than 30 in the where clause because it first needs to generate these results and only once the, gen the results have been generated can it apply this criteria so that's why we have a having so remember aggregate function if you want it grouped by a whole bunch of aggregate functions you can use the grouped bar and then if you want a criteria based on that aggregate function you use the having clause so remind ourselves what we've learned today we've learned about count max min sum and average are aggregate functions we've learned about grouping those aggregate functions and then basing a criteria using the having clause on those aggregate functions for the other videos in the series you can go to our youtube channel please subscribe and like and leave comments we'd love to hear from you and remember don't do it the long way do it the mr long way
The examples from today's video come from the Grade 12 Delphi E notes, which are made by Study Opportunities. Uh, these are available in 2014. In 2015, a textbook will be made available.